They were first reported in waters just off Florida, and uh, nothing much happened. There's the occasional report for several years, but by the year 2000, though, these reports had started ranging, you know, from Florida all the way north to just about Rhode Island. And so they expanded their range along the eastern seaboard over the better part of a decade, again inhabiting all sorts of depths. They seem not to range any further north than where they are now, probably because the water gets a bit too cold for them. But they they just um, expanded the range, became more abun abundant, and then in 2004, some seem to have made the jump. We don't know exactly how, possibly through the transport of buoyant eggs in um, currents. But they in 2004, they were first reported in the Bahamian archipelago. And from there, they have now, over the past five years, basically invaded the entire Bahamian archipelago. They've moved up as far north as Bermuda, and they have started the invasion of the Caribbean. So we did the latest reports, I think a, a few weeks ago, had them in Bonaire, and they're found in uh, on the South Central American mainland. They are found, you know, not at very high densities, but there are confirmed reports of them on many, many Caribbean islands right now. So it's, you know, they stayed sort of quiescent for a long time in Florida, but since they've managed to colonize the first coral reefs, it's been absolutely explosive. what we're seeing is that lionfish are becoming one of the most abundant predators of their size on coral reefs uh, in that region. So for example, we've got native species like grouper, um, coney grouper, grazebee, uh, which are naturally found on those reefs, and now lionfish are outnumbering those species. Um, so uh, we would call this a very heavily invaded region. Lionfish are one of the most dominant fish that are now found there. Basically, you will just see them pretty much everywhere, or do you still have to look a little bit? You're, you're going to dive in the Bahamas, and you're going to see, uh, when you first get in the water, you're going to see a lionfish, and then you're going to keep continuing on with your dive, and you're going to see another lionfish, and then another lionfish, and then you're probably going to look under a coral head and see six or seven lionfish wow. together. And as you continue on your 30 or 60 minute dive, you're going to see lionfish um, probably numerous times all over that reef. Um, and so, you know, they're no longer a novelty for dives in the Bahamas. They're sort of one of the one of the species that people see all of the time. So literally you might see 20 or 30 lionfish in the dive? It's possible. Mm -hmm. Wow. Absolutely. Potentially more than that even. When lionfish first showed up in New Providence, it really, I think, was a novelty for the dive masters to take their guests down to look at the lionfish and only get their photo. Um, you know, you'd have one or two lionfish that you'd see on the dive. And so, you know, the people that have been working there over these last four years are just mind boggled at how much things have changed in terms of the number of lionfish that are there. Um, and, you know, they haven't been counting the fish, but they can definitely tell you that they've seen you know, dramatic changes on these reefs in terms of how many lionfish are now there. And, you know, they say, you know, if only we'd known what was going to happen with this, we wouldn't have seen it as such a novelty because now it's too late with all this. And then when you take that information and share it with dive masters in other regions, you know, they get this, they clue in and they they understand what was sort of at stake and what could potentially happen on the same reefs that they dive. So I think I've just been really impressed actually with, you know, how concerned and how sort of keyed in the dive masters and dive industry have been on a number of levels in different places. Really good to see actually.